Hi there, it's David Williams from Okanagan College, and today's video is on PN junctions. Now remember that a P-type semiconductor material is one that is created when we have an intrinsic semiconductor, like say pure silicon, and we add some kind of impurity into it to replace some of those silicon atoms with another atom that has one fewer electron in its valence shell. And what we end up with is this p-type material that has all of these extra holes in it. I'm just going to draw them as, as circles. All of these extra holes and this p-type material because these extra holes are... It's called p-type material because all of these holes represent a positive charge. Now, keep in mind that it doesn't make the, the net charge of this p-type material positively charged, but each one of those holes does represent a positive charge. It's balanced out by um, the positive and negative charges in the in the atom itself balance out, so the p-type material itself is not positively charged. But these extra holes represent positive charges that, as we'll see, are in a sense free to move around. And an n-type material is one where we take an intrinsic semiconductor, again like silicon, and replace some of those silicon atoms with atoms of, a, of another kind that have one more electron in the band itself. So what we end up with, I'm going to draw them as little dashes to represent the negative, the negative of the electrons, we end up with this material, this n-type semiconductor that has lots of extra electrons in it. So extra electrons. These electrons are are now charge carriers and they're more or less free to move around and these these holes are also the charge carriers and in a way they're free to move around but as well as uh, you've hopefully seen it's not actually the holes that are moving but electrons that are jumping from hole to hole to make it look like a hole is moving. Now if we can manufacture material where we have p-type p-doped material on one side and n-type material on the other side and and we basically join those two together we created a created a PN junction. Now, right off the bat, what's going to happen is these extra electrons are want to go are going to want to go into these holes over here. So, we're going to get the, these electrons, which are free to move, fall into the holes over here, and we will end up with a device that looks something like this. We'll have the p-type material and the n-type material. So p-type still has all of these holes, and the n-type still has all of these electrons, but in between them we've got this place where the extra electrons have fallen into the holes and rejoined with the holes, and we've got this region where we don't have any extra electrons or any extra holes. And since we started out with material that was neutrally charged in, in that we had no extra positive or no extra negative charges, in this within this region here, we used to have some negative charges over here, but they moved over to this side. So we're going to have this side is actually going to be slightly positive compared to this side, which now has all these extra electrons. That's going to be slightly negative. And this is a very important concept to understand when we, when we start looking at diodes, which is really what a PN junction is because this represents uh, a little bit of a barrier to overcome before this PN junction or this, this diode can actually start conducting. Now, I'll just throw a little bit of terminology at you. This region here is called the depletion region. And the voltage that is represented here is the barrier voltage. So let's see what happens when we take this PN junction and we apply some external voltage to it. Now I'm going to put a resistor in here just as a current limiting current limiting resistor and I'm going to put a, a volt I'm going to put a voltage source in and this voltage source is going to be oriented in this direction. So there's my positive side and there's my negative side of the voltage source. Now let's think about what's going to happen. This, this negative side of the voltage source is going to attract all of these positive elements in the in this p in this p type material on this side 
and over on here on the positive, the positive side of the battery is going to attract all of these free electrons. And so these free, let's look at the positive side first, these free electrons are going to be pulled towards the positive side and this is a battery and these are these are the holes so the holes aren't actually going to be pulled towards the negative side what's actually going to be what's actually going to happen is this this uh, battery is going to act as a source of electrons and these electrons are going to come over this way and what they're going to do is they're going to fill up these holes so in effect what we're doing is we're eliminating all the holes from this side and we're eliminating all the electrons from this side so what we'll end up with is a p-n junction, which is no longer a p-n junction because we've removed all the extra holes and we've removed all of the elect extra electrons. And once that happens, there is no more current that can flow because those holes and electrons are the, are the charge carriers. And we have a circuit that is essentially an open circuit now. Now let's take the same p-n junction and this time we're going to turn our voltage source around so that we have the positives connected up to the P side and the negatives connected up to the N side. And what's going to happen here, let's say we started with a really low voltage. Uh, we just cranked it up a little bit to say 0.1 volts or something. So this is more negative and what it's going to do is it's going to act as a, as a source of electrons but it's also going to push these electrons away From, from its its connection side towards the towards the positive hole side. And what's going to happen over on this side, let's just think of these holes as holes as opposed to the electrons that are actually moving. What's going to happen here is this positive side is going to act to push these holes also towards the depletion region. And what we'll get is as this as this voltage is increased from say 0.1 to 0.2 volts, is this depletion region is going to be pushed closer and closer together. And once we reach the point where this depletion region has been completely closed because we've had enough, we have enough electric potential to push these negatives towards the positive and where we actually, we actually reach the point where they, these, these uh, electrons can fall into the holes, we're going to get conduction occurring. So once we've applied enough voltage to push the electrons right into the holes, what's going to happen is these electrons are going to be continuously pushed into the holes and this battery is going to be continuously acting as a source of electrons and the electrons flowing into here through the end type material the electrons moving across falling into the holes and then really what we're going to have, have is electrons filling filling in previous holes as as uh, they are being pulled towards the positive side so we're going to have electrons flowing out of the p-type material here and ultimately we end up with a completed circuit and there's just a continuous flow of, of electrons and holes through, through the circuit. So just a quick recap of what we've gone over. We started off with a p-type material and an n-type material that were joined together and when we have no external voltage source applied to them some of those holes are going to be filled with electrons, we end up with a depletion region. Then if we apply an external circuit, an external voltage source to it, and in the, whenever we apply an external external voltage source, a DC source to, to any of these electronic circuits that, that we're going to look at, we call this biasing. And in this case, when we apply a voltage so that no current flows in the circuit. We call this particular case, this diode is reverse biased. And when we apply a voltage to, a, to cause current to flow in this diode, we call this forward biased. So again, anytime we apply an external voltage source to to an electronic circuit to an electronic device like the diode we call it biasing and if for the diode there's two different ways we could bio, bias the circuit we can either reverse bias the circuit so that no current flows or we can forward bias the circuit so that current flows and there's sort of an in-between point where we haven't applied enough voltage in the forward sense to to allow current to flow because we haven't overcome this barrier voltage yet and that's something that we're going to talk about a little bit in the next video.
So I hope you enjoyed this and, and learned a little bit about PN junctions, and I'll see you in the next video.